I have two confessions to make. I haven't seen all the Studio Ghibli movies, and I know for some people, that's like saying I haven't seen every Disney movie. It's gross and disgusting, and I should be shot out of a cannon for my transgressions. I have seen, though, My Neighbor Totoro, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, and Kiki's Delivery Service. Everything else I haven't seen, and for that, I am truly sorry. A bigger confession is, I know the kids die. <laughs> or someone dies in the end of the movie, or something. And while that's a big spoiler, I kind of think it isn't in a way. Sometimes seeing the journey is just as nice even if you know the destination. Like everyone knows Anakin becomes Darth Vader, but seeing him go from this to this is good. It's why a lot of people will watch a review then watch a movie, they just watched a review with spoilers in it on. Knowing that something happens isn't the same as knowing how it happened and that's the fun of it. Anyway, I say all this to justify that I just wanna see this movie that came out over 30 years ago. September 21st, 1945. That was the night I died. Well, it came out swinging because in the softest, gentlest, most calming voice, a man is narrating and describing the day he died. Before you know anyone's name or their circumstances, you see someone suffering, and I already feel myself getting emotional. I've been homeless before, and it's shit. Luckily, I wasn't struggling nearly as much as starving in a train station, but the apathy is what gets me. Seeing this scene, I'm not sure if I should feel more saddened or angry. People's apathy to the suffering of others will always be something that makes me misanthropic. I try to be empathetic and kind, but seeing people apathetic or even cold to another human being suffering makes my blood run cold. Maybe because I've been on the receiving end of that apathy in various forms my whole life, but I can't stand it. It's a massive pet peeve of mine when people don't even acknowledge the existence of homeless people. Like it's nothing in the grand scheme of things, and maybe it's simply just to make myself feel better, but I always try to look them in the eye and respond even if I don't have change or I'm in a hurry. It's insignificant, but it reminds me me that these are people these are human beings i'm talking to hey now these bums are a disgrace Someone eventually walks over and gives him food, but that's out of what, dozens, if not hundreds of people that pass him every day? Everyone wants to believe they are far removed from people suffering, but we aren't. It's very rare for someone not to be one bad week away from being the same person they find to be a nuisance. I know I say all the time I'm a Philistine who doesn't know shit about cinematography or whatever, but this scene is so fucking surreal. To hear him say something so heavy and leaving a viewer to wrestle with what he just said, where you hear absolutely nothing but the character's breaths, so all of a sudden it being the sound of trains is kind of whiplash inducing. It's almost indescribable even though I just described it. Also, if you're looking for someone who is knowledgeable about geopolitics in and around World War II, I'm not the right channel. Like, I know more than the average American, but as an American, I assure you that bar is very much in hell, so I can't really offer much insight of that nature. And I'm not the kind of person who talks at length about things they don't know about as well. But based on the date he says he died, this is taking place not long after the end of World War II, like maybe like a month or a couple weeks or something. This movie has no reason being so beautifully sad already. A janitor finds the kid dying or dead and then chucks his stuff, which is confusing to me because if he's dead, why don't you move his body? But if he's dying, why are you throwing his stuff? Anyway. It's like a canister for snacks or something, but inside is bones, and that's so macabre, but also a little girl appears, and I'm like, is it her bones? Miyazaki, you misanthropic rat bastard. Don't you do this to me. It hasn't even been five minutes yet. The dead ghost guy takes a little girl with him, and they board a train, and all Miyazaki movies blend supernatural with regular life so well. In every Ghibli movie, it's all so seamless that the characters in the movie, much less the viewer, understand what's happening. One moment, characters will peacefully exist, and then the next, they're casually witnessing things that question their reality. And I love how seamless that sort of transition always is and has been in Ghibli movies. I don't believe in the supernatural, but the effortlessness at which he shows the unknown and unthinkable is beautiful, honestly. Miyazaki has a fondness for innocence and the natural, and you can always tell that in his work. He despises adults, as in, in a lot of the Studio Ghibli movies I've seen, the adults are in the way of change or growth. They are the robots block of what is good and natural, i.e. children, nature, animals. Basically, they're kind of always the villains. Anyway, I say all this to say, 
I don't really get if they're ghosts or what's happening, but I don't need to. And that's the beauty of Ghibli movies. You don't need the finer details of the characters just yet, but you're always immediately invested in them and their well-being as soon as you meet them. As my two little faves are riding a train, planes are firebombing an area in the distance, and I'm saddened by the entire thing. World War II was such a grossly inhumane period of existence. And I know people who hear that are thinking, no shit, of course. But my larger point is, Miyazaki was born a few years before World War II ended. He grew up in the aftermath of it all, and the effect the firebombing and the nukes we dropped on those innocent people had. So it makes sense this movie would show the humanity and devastation in all of this, and just the unspeakable toll it took on a population, and he has every right to tell that reality. However, the reason I say it was just overall gross and inhumane is it would be equally as valid for someone in, say, China or Korea to make an emotional story of the horrors that the Japanese committed against them. And in no way am I saying that the actions of a government or a military reflect the wishes of innocent civilians, so they deserve punishment as well. What America did in Japan is awful, and what Japan did is awful. I think ultimately what I'm trying to say is, as an American, we kind of glorify World War II as a battle of good and evil, and America did the right thing, but it's that's not the case. What we did was evil incarnate. Those were innocent people with hopes and dreams and families, children with futures, not combatants. I'm rambling, but it all just hurts my heart to think how the awful things we did are glorified as righteous because the military slash government of the people we did horrible things to did horrible things. Maybe I'm not getting it, but I'm so frustrated right now. It could be my lack of historical knowledge. Maybe there were people who didn't take the gravity of everything quite seriously yet, but someone is going around yelling, hey, air raid, go to the shelter, and Satan is over here bearing food to ferment. My brother in Christ, fuck that food. What are you doing? You can't eat it or even unbury it if you're dead. What is happening? Please get to safety, bro. You have your little sister with you too. Why didn't you go with your mom when she went earlier? Bro was running around like he was late to start packing before vacation. I don't really possess the vocabulary and knowledge to describe what I'm watching and the gravity of it, which I feel may unfortunately be a recurring problem for me as I watch this movie. Seita is running around the city trying to find safety for him and his sister as civilians try to as well. The chaos of trying to find safety is everything around you burns down. I'm fully aware that these characters aren't real, but the genuine fear being expressed in this child's face feels real. I love how this movie uses silence for effect, but also like a weight that the viewer has to carry, like in this scene for example. It's silent as far as dialogue, but you hear a baby crying, buildings burning, and then cutting through that, you hear a man yell, Long live the emperor. Bro, fuck the emperor right now. I'm sure he's somewhere safe. He has multiple homes. I have just the one, and it's fucking being burned down right now. Me and my child are homeless now. Can I live with the emperor? How about any of the politicians that decided we belong in this war? It's just so heavy that you have no choice but to sit there like, man, this was and is still happening today. I have to pause very often, not because I have anything profound to say or any thoughts but just to process and not be overwhelmed with what I'm seeing. This is obviously animated but it's hard not to see scenes of Seita and Setsuko looking over the destruction of bombing calls and I think do you think there were actual people during World War II who had a similar feeling of melancholy of sadness? Oh that was a playground I played at as a child and now it's gone. That was my favorite convenience store where the nice old lady would give me free snacks and comment how it reminded her of her son when he was younger. I hope she survived or there goes my school yeah i hated going but now i'll never have the choice of not going ever again i wonder if the people in my class are okay i don't know it's tough for me to find ways to make jokes or humor especially when things like this are happening in the real world right now as i record this video in ukraine or palestine or even haiti those circumstances are a bit different but like similar in nature you know what i mean it's sad to think about that there's a kid who just woke up one day and things that they expected or took for granted of being there just aren't anymore. Not through the passage of time and change, but because some people you never met who refused to see your humanity destroyed it. It's kind of funny in its own morbid way. World War II ended almost 80 years ago, and yet America is still this grim reaper figure, this pervasive, destructive entity motivated only by self-interest. It's crazy how this sadness and destruction is just distributed to the world with nothing having changed since World War II, except the white man in the suit who gives it okay. 
guy from Franklin D. Roosevelt to Joe Biden. I'm sure people in Palestine feel the same. Here are the remnants of the church my grandmother used to attend. This is a house my best friend who was killed in rocket fire used to live in. I feel so helpless sometimes, especially in moments like this, watching this movie and thinking how there are very real children who are experiencing things just like this right now in the real world. Things so horrific I can barely sit through it without taking a moment to pause and compose myself. Sata says to his sister that their dad will make them pay for what they've done. His dad appears to be in the military from the earlier photos I saw. And it all just makes me think of the cycle of it all. The anger and resentment and how ultimately people's anger is justified. For example, Sata. If his father dies, he has every right to be angry even though people in the Japanese military did awful shit too. Maybe the person who killed Sata's father is in the right because he killed someone that they love. And I don't know if Sata's father dies or doesn't, but it just kind of brings me back to the contemporary examples of what's happening currently across the world. And I'm not capable of speaking on politics. I'm way too dumb for all that. But it still feels just like a never-ending cycle, all because people in positions of power who are incapable of seeing humanity and the people they are harming has such a generational effect. Do you think there's maybe a member of Hamas who might have had a family member who was unarmed and killed during the Great March of Return and was just so angry they wanted to retaliate? Like, sure, condemn Hamas, whatever, but even to make the microcosm even smaller, America has mass murders all the time. Can you not see the logic in someone who has had someone they care for taken from them to hate the perpetrator forever? I know at least for me, I'm not a good enough person to let that go. If someone hurt my family or friends, I would spend the rest of my days obsessing over how to hurt them back. Again, I'm no political pundit. I'm just a dumbass who talks into a microphone to make strangers laugh, but it's hard to find the humor during this movie, you know? Sato walks around with his sister. I keep forgetting her name, unfortunately, but they walk around to see the destruction and harm that the raid caused, and it's gruesome even in animated form. Charred dead bodies, people talking about how they lost their home. If I remember correctly, the bombing of Tokyo left one million people homeless. One million. To put that into perspective, in 2022, America's homeless population across the entire U.S. was around 600,000. One million people over the course of two days just now homeless. And they're lucky. They're still alive, at least. God damn. I had to pause it again. I genuinely don't know how I'm going to get through this movie. Like this child's poor mother's burned from head to toe. Barely alive. What could I possibly say that would make this entertaining for you in any real or genuine way? I'm the kind of person who will make jokes about my own suicide attempts left and right. But I am currently left speechless at the sight of a cartoon child seeing his horribly burned mother. I don't know how to take the sting out of this, even for me. How do you explain what's happening to a child? How do you explain? to a slightly older child that they have to carry the burden of having to explain things to that child. Setsuko is sad and crying because she wants to see her mother and Seita tries to cheer her up by swinging on the pull-up bar but she doesn't look because how do you comfort a child crying who wants to see their mother but can't see their mother? Sorry Setsuko, our governments are at war so we are just collateral damage in all of this. I believe they said it's 41 or something at this point and like the worst is yet to come honestly. This level of destruction might as well be the calm before the storm. God, this child watching his mother covered in flies and maggots cut her off is insane. This is an odd thought I had, but I grew up in the early 2000s internet, which was just awash with sites like Live Leak and shit like that. So I often think I am kind of numb to suffering on top of struggling with my own mental illness and depression. I think I'm just kind of dead inside that nothing matters, but I'll see images from Gaza or even just this scene in the movie and be upset but also soothed by the fact I still have my humanity that I haven't grown so callous or apathetic as I believe myself to be and it brings me comfort in a weird way that I will never be okay with seeing other people suffering even if it's animated I've been so absorbed in making sure I don't start sobbing and also taking notes that I didn't realize his mom is dead which makes sense of course she was burned on like 90% of her body but I didn't realize until I saw them burning bodies and then him carrying a box and I'm like Oh, oh, and you know, just fuck, man. I know most people's deaths are sudden. You can't schedule it, but it still feels so heavy to go from seeing your mom fine and wishing her luck on her way to the shelter to holding her ashes, not even in like what, the course of a week? The fact that the main character is dead and you know who he is in the beginning of the story may be worse than him being killed off in the end. Like watching Sata go through life and then dying hurts. And it's tragic, but it's a war movie, so it feels kind of expected. 
understood. Like, it catching you off guard would be a sad reality you just have to sit with. But knowing he dies, when he dies, and how he dies, but seeing the prelude of all of that is shattering. Because you know there's nothing you can do. Like, you can fight against the current of the movie, but ultimately it's futile. You know he dies, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. You just have to make peace with it. And the fact that Go Seita and Setsuko are reliving this bit by bit along with the viewer is kind of like taking a lemon juice bath while being covered in paper cuts. It's not going to kill you, but you're going to wish you were dead. I know he's just trying to protect his little sister, but you gotta just admit that your mother's dead, dude. Like, she'll cry, it'll suck, but you'll have each other. Also, he chose the world's worst hiding spot. You would have been better off just putting it on a shelf no one can reach at. Anyway, what sucks even more about all this is that Setsuko and Seita are still a lot more lucky than other people. They had an aunt in a nearby town. They have a dad in the Navy that had connections to help them move there. There are thousands of people who weren't lucky enough to have any of those and are just living on the street now with no relatives or help moving or parents at all. Of course the aunt's a piece of shit because this couldn't get any sadder as it is. Food supplies are obviously rationed and as the kids of someone in the military, Seita and Setsuko get the good shit. But the shitty aunt literally gives them the bare minimum to keep them alive. Like soup but no rice, but gives it to her husband, herself, and her child. Man, I hope this bitch gets burned alive. I can't wait until this movie is over. Not because it's bad, it's actually a phenomenal movie. I just can't take being sad anymore. Like my poor soul is shattering. I keep checking the time and hopes it ends soon. I can't take any more heartbreak. Does Setsuko have some sort of disease? In the beginning of the movie, before you find out the ghost talking as Seita and the little girl as Setsuko, you see him have a candy container filled with bones. And I mentioned earlier, I wonder if that's her bones. And the story is pouring towards that being true because she obviously dies or isn't around at least by the time he dies. And she has these like itchy blisters all over her body. I wonder if when she went to pee, she touched something or came across some sort of chemical that caused all of this. I hate this bitch so much. It's making me angry almost enough to overpower the sadness. She literally convinced Seita to sell his mother's kimonos for rice and he agrees despite Setsuko crying and objecting and she has the nerve to only give him half. Bitch, you wouldn't have this rice at all if, if it wasn't for his dead mother's shit. Like I know Setsuko and Seita die and now I've made my peace with this reality almost 40 minutes into the movie but I need her to die before them. If this bitch lives while these innocent children die as soon as I can monetize and have enough money I'm going to book a ticket to Japan to visit Ghibli Studios to rub my bare ass on Miyazaki's desk. I need her to die. She literally looked this child in the face saying he doesn't deserve as much as she gives her family because he doesn't contribute. Bitch, what do you do? Because your family works in or around the military that gave you the right to eat the supplies that Seita brought from home. I want to reach into this movie and strangle this woman. Seita is trying his best to take care of a child when he is probably like 13 max and it fucking sucks, especially when you have shitty adults around you with no compassion. Fucking Christ. And then bro's basically a parent now. I'm fucking foaming at the mouth and howling at the moon and flinging shit at the walls. Please, I need this woman to go into the forever box. Like she has made living with her so awful that these two fucking children decide to live in a bomb shelter. Like sure, it could be worse for them. She's only verbally abusive, not physically. Not to say that as though one is better than the other, but to push children to the point where they basically run away is crazy. Cause wouldn't they be better off living near where they actually are from? Like Seita has 7k in the bank. Like I tried looking up what that is in dollars based on inflation and all that good stuff but I couldn't find out any information but anything has to be better than nothing right like you're living in a bomb shelter people around town seem to have known you if you ask if you can pay rent share rations hell find other orphans and start a band of pickpockets something there's only 20 minutes left in the movie but I keep thinking about real life parallels of children who are now orphaned and have to fend for themselves while out to pee Setsuko and say to comment that a kamikaze plane in the sky looks like a firefly and i'm curious what the ultimate analogy between a war movie and a grave of fireflies whether they will comment on how fragile fireflies are much like people or how in a dark world there's no difference between light from fireflies or from the planes dropping bombs on you from the sky so to come and say to gather a bunch of fireflies for light and i wonder if that's what the parallel would be just as these fireflies that will die in this shelter so will sato and satsuko i might just be reading into things but satsuko Setsuko's face looks less and less youthful, and maybe that's just the art, but I think it's the show that she's getting sicker and sicker. God, that's so sad. Seita wonders where his dad is, which makes sense. I think he might be dead because he sent him two letters and hasn't heard back and is sad and rolls over to, to cuddle Setsuko, and she's like, get off of me, and I get it, but
but fuck, man. Just fuck. A firefly's light just went out and it died. And if that's not foreshadowing, get it out, bro. Get it all out. He can finally cry about his mom being dead now that his sister knows she's dead because the bitch aunt told her already. And he's like, we can visit her grave someday as it pans over to show the mom's ashes on a nearby shelf. And Setsuko asks, why do fireflies have to die so soon? And I think that's what the comparison is. Like fireflies, people die too soon. Besides politicians, they seem to live forever. Seita goes to a farmer and it's like hey can you sell me anything and he's like no i can't likely because farmers have to give whatever they make to the government which i get but the farmer is like man just go back to that lady and i kind of have to agree it sucks it isn't great there she's a shitty person i'm all on board for all of those things but it's better than starving to death they're literally resorting to stealing now which i'm sure the punishment for is a lot worse in a few years living with that woman god damn it setsuko has lice seita is malnourished and is breaking out in a rash it makes me angry angry how this child has to be strong and have pride. Setsuko is sick and needs to be taken to a hospital. He's resorting to stealing and I wish he would just put his pride to the side and go, hey, aunt bitch, Setsuko is sick, etc. We need help. He's a kid. His brain isn't done marinating, especially not enough to think of things in long term, which is worsened by homelessness. Every moment they are homeless is trying to survive in the short term. I just wish I didn't have to watch these children die needlessly. And I get it. They aren't real, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. This child is forced to make adult decisions and he doesn't have the life experience to make informed ones. And it's just breaking my heart. Bro, please take her to the doctor. Please. He's literally sneaking away during emergencies to steal from his aunt and i don't get it it's like watching someone self-destruct and choose to make bad choices but he's a fucking child so of course he will choose the worst option like while he's stealing what if he dies while setsuko is sick what if the shelter he lives at gets hit while he's away bro please oh god please don't be dead i know there's only like 15 minutes left in the movie but please i don't want to do this right now not at 3 a.m i need setsuko to be alive for my mental health seita it shouldn't have gotten to this point like i get it you're a kid but shit man the doctor says setsuko is just malnourished and seita is like where am i supposed to get food at your aunt's house my child she has food hell ask around town if there's work you can do for food or supplies please anything like there has to be options beside feeding her dirt flavored shaved ice while withdrawing money seita overhears about japan's unconditional surrender which happens like a month after they dropped nukes on nagasaki and hiroshima i believe oh lord this poor baby is eating marbles thinking it's candy also if he had money left this entire time why did it take him so long to get to this point why did you resort to stealing before just withdrawing money i have seen horror movies that didn't make me feel as much emotion as watching this child die of starvation up until the very moment seita says she never woke up and genuinely praying that this child lives that there's a happy ending that there's some sort of twist where things get better but it doesn't there's a montage that starts off with a family moving back into their home i assume that they left due to the war that is juxtaposed to being right across the river that this happy well-off family lives is where seita and setsuko lived in the bomb shelter opera music plays as it shows setsuko's time there when she was alive playing and cleaning and just being a child and as it happens i can't help but to think of all the real life setsukos and satas in the world and how a lot like as i'm watching grave of fireflies i can do nothing for them and it's hard not to become a doomer about it and not lay in a little ball and cry Seta burns setsuko's ashes and the final scene is of setsuko and Seta looking over modern day japan as ghosts and the movie ends that's as happy of an ending as they get to be together in death hopefully along with their parents and that's as happy as it gets a life of suffering and then it ends final thoughts grave of fireflies punches you in the face and stomach as hard as it can but the thing is it spends over an hour convincing you that while this is going to hurt by the end you'll embrace that pain and maybe even welcome it you know the main characters are going to die and yet you watch anyway because that punch in the face is almost solace rather than the torture of watching those children suffer i spent the entire movie trying my best not to cry taking moments to pause as much as i needed it's it's hard not to think of real life children going through this and just not losing what little faith i have in humanity sometimes i said it earlier but i wanted the movie to end not because it was bad but because i couldn't take the pain anymore tomorrow i'll still wake up in a world where my government is still doing the same thing to children and i have to live with that horror on my conscience until my final breath and i don't know how to cope with that 
that sometimes. There's no happy ending for Setsuko and Seita. You just have to take comfort in the fact that they're not hurting anymore. And unfortunately, that's a reality for a lot of people currently in the world. And obviously, I know it's not all about me. It's just hard to cope with that reality at times. Anyway, Grave of Fireflies is great. Go watch it. And free Palestine, honestly. I have a link to some charities in the description if you want to help in any way. I'm a tiny channel, but, you know, I can't do much, but I can do what I can. Thanks for watching.